Kenyan blogger Edgar Barre, or as he describes himself, his teamness, was in trouble with the law for sharing another popular blogger's personal details. Edgar Obara's arrest on the 30th of July drew public debate over the sharing of personal information, in this case, Natalie Tewa's visa details. There's a term for this act, doxing. The Oxford Dictionary defines doxing as searching for and publishing private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. This includes a person's phone number, home address, banking information, national identity card, and travel documents. If you look at the history of doxing, you'll find that in the U.S. there were so many doxing incidences which involved, like, especially in the past when there were abortion, anti-abortion protests and everything, people would share information of the agencies and the people who engage in abortion and people used to get harmed. This has happened numerous times to public figures, including Michelle Obama. As internet access grows in Kenya and other African countries, so does the doxing trend. A young Kenyan woman by the name Azia Nasenya, who shot to fame through TikTok, had her number maliciously shared on social media. And two days after the incident, she received more than 10,000 messages on her private line. But is doxing punitive within the Kenyan jurisdiction? Doxing explicitly is not under Kenyan law. What is there is um, we have the right to privacy under Article 31 of the Constitution, which uh, states that info, uh, every person has the right to privacy, which includes the right not to have information related to their family or private affairs unnecessarily required or revealed. While the Constitution of Kenya guarantees the freedom of expression, it also states that this freedom does not extend to hate speech. And in the exercise of the right to freedom of expression, every person shall respect the rights and reputation of others. Section 72 states that a person who discloses personal data to third party commits an offence. This is what Edgar Barre is being charged with. I think we are at a very interesting point in terms of uh, jurisprudence of data protection law because okay, we never expected that this act would be used, especially for criminal law and uh, in this particular circumstance, but here we are. So that's where somebody can also be charged under the Computer Misuse and Cybercrime Act and Section 27, which talks about cyber harassment. A person who commits this offence is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 20 million shillings or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years or to both. On doxic laws or cyber harassment, it may not be as rampant in other African countries, especially where freedom of expression is not really there. But now in, in jurisdictions where now people are afraid to say anything, that's where you find people abusing their freedom of expression and now engaging in cyber harassment and such. When the anti-government protests broke out in Sudan in December 2018, Facebook groups run by women took it upon themselves to dock security agents and police officers who were brutalizing demonstrators. And despite the government blocking social media sites, the women used virtual private networks to navigate around the web. This was so impactful, so much so that police officers would hide their faces whenever they were out on the streets for fear of appearing in the groups. Yes, there's the aspect of social justice and sometimes revenge, like was being done in Sudan where um, women used to reveal information of officers who were abusing their power. And the officers used to be subjected to kangaroo courts in the village and sometimes being uh, chased out of town. So there are those aspects, but when you look at it in, in form of justice, is there a way in which you can achieve justice without causing more harm? Because also accused people 
have uh, rights. While most African countries have no strong laws on cyber harassment, the African Union came up with the Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data, which is a continental policy meant to guide its member states. It proposes that state parties should establish clear accountability in matters of cybersecurity at all levels of government by defining the roles and responsibility in precise terms. Kenya and other 46 African nations have not ratified it.